Okay, now let's do a quick review of some key concepts from vector calculus that we'll need when we're talking about fluids in aerodynamic flows. And this comes from section 2.2 .2 in your book, which goes into quite a bit more detail than I'll do here. Okay, so uh, the first thing is to remember that when we're dealing with fluids, we're dealing with fields, both scalar fields and vector fields. And scalar field examples are a single number at each point in space, x, y, z, and time t. So things like pressure, density, and temperature are all scalar fields. And other things it means there's one value at each point in space and time. Vector fields, classic example would be velocity, we have vx i, plus v y j plus v z k and each of these v x is a function of x y z and t as is v y and v z So we have a magnitude and direction, a vector. At each point in space and time. Now, the first of the three major types of operations on fields that we need to think about is the gradient. And this is something that has to do with a scalar field. So for the gradient, we use the del operator which has this symbol. And this is just defined as follows. Partial derivative with respect to x in the i direction, plus partial derivative with respect to y in the j direction, plus partial derivative with respect to z in the k direction, where i, j, and k are unit vectors along the x, y, and z axes. And of course, this is in Cartesian coordinates. The formulas are slightly different in other coordinate systems. Some of those are discussed in the textbook. So for example, if we have a pressure field, which is a scalar field, then the gradient of the pressure P by definition is dP dx in the i direction plus dP d y in the j direction plus dp dz in the k direction. So this defines a vector field and its magnitude indicates the maximum rate of change of p per unit length of coordinate space. And its direction simply gives the direction of the max rate of change of P.
Now, you can apply the same operation to a vector field, and that gives you something called the divergence. So here we take the same operator and take the dot product of this was a vector field. This gives us dvx dx plus d dy dy plus d dz dz again in Cartesian. So this is a scalar field. So applying the del operator to a scalar field gives you the gradient, which is a vector. Applying the del operator to a vector field, which is a take, getting the divergence, is a scalar field. So this gives a measure of expansion. at a point, which is why it's called divergence. It measures how much the flow is sort of blowing up away from a point or crunching in towards that point. And then the final operation that we can do with the del operator is take the curl, also of a vector field, where we take the del operator, same operator again, and cross that with a vector field. And that's just evaluated in the typical manner that we evaluate cross products. So this is d dx, d dy, d dz, dx, dy, and dz. I won't work this out, you know, how to evaluate these I expect, um, but you can see that this will give you another vector field, each component of which uh, is a difference between two partial derivatives of the vector.